This time on Goss's Garage, I'm going to show you how we go about finding problems inside an engine. You see, a lot of people seem to think that uh, using a compression gauge such as we have here is going to be the answer to determining engine condition and things like that, when in reality it may not be. As a matter of fact, we don't use compression testing that much anymore uh, unless we have a dead cylinder, a cylinder that just plain isn't firing and we want to find out which one it is and we can't do it electronically. So lots of times we use compression to find the dead cylinder. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, inside an engine, we have a lot of things that have to be essentially airtight. Up here in the top, we have the valves, one for one or two or more for the intake that allow uh, air to come into the engine. And we have one or more exhaust valves to allow the exhaust to go out. Well, when they're closed, they have to be airtight. So if one of them gets a nick in the side of it or something like that, uh, it would be a burnt valve and that would mean that you have a loss of compression. And yes, you might see that on a compression gauge, but eh, maybe you don't. Also, here on the piston, we have the piston rings that seal the piston to the cylinder walls to make it more or less airtight. Now, none of this is absolute, but there are specifications that we go for. All right, so suppose we uh, run this compression gauge and we have low compression on this cylinder right here. Okay, we have low compression. And what that means in a lot of shops, or for do-it-yourselfers, okay, I gotta tear the engine down. Well, no, you don't. You don't have to tear the engine down to find out what is wrong inside that engine. See, that's where this tool right here comes into play. Now, if you've never seen one of these, this is a pretty, uh, pretty interesting piece. This is what's called a cylinder leakage or cylinder leak down tester. And what it amounts to is you put shop air, you have to have a good size compressor to, to use this, you put shop air in here and then you adjust this to read zero. Then, the other end of this, there are adapters that go into the spark plug hole and you set the engine up so that both valves are closed and there's a way to do that from looking at the end of the crankshaft. Both valves are closed, and now you should have a relatively airtight cylinder. So now we take this, we connect it up, and what it does is it puts a metered amount of air into the cylinder. Now, if we have something worn in there, a burnt valve, or we have worn piston rings or something like that, we're going to see a percentage of leakage that exceeds manufacturer's allowable limits. And that is typically 20%. So in most cases, what you're looking at is if you've got more than 20% of leakage, you've got wear inside that cylinder. But you can go a lot farther with this than you ever could with a compression tester. The reason is, if we're putting air in there, and that air is leaking out, we simply have to find out where it's leaking out to know what's wrong. Like here, the valve cover. One of the first things we would do is to take the oil filler cap off of the valve cover. Now, we're gonna to listen to see if the air is coming out through the valve cover. If it is, that means that the piston rings or the piston, something down here in the bottom part of the engine is worn and the air is going either through or past that piston into the crankcase and then back up through the breather system and out through the oil filler cap. So now we know we've got a major problem in the bottom of this engine. 
All right, but suppose we don't really hear anything there. What do we do next? Well, the next thing we do is we go to the tailpipe of the car. And get your ear down there. Of course, the engine isn't running or anything. And see if you hear air coming out of the tailpipe. If you do, that means that one or more of the exhaust valves in here are burned, they're damaged somehow, and they're not making an airtight seal. And we know that we have a problem up here in the cylinder head, which isn't nearly as major as a problem in the bottom of the engine. Down here, usually replace engine. Up here, typically do a head gasket or valve cover or a valve job or something like that. A lot less costly. All right, next thing that we do, if we haven't uh, found the source of the air leak yet, is we go to the air filter, uh, throttle body, whatever. We open it up and we listen at the throttle body to see if the air is coming out through the intake. And if it is, that just told us that again, we have a problem in the upper part of the engine. We have one or more of the intake valves that are not sealing properly. So we're isolating this to the bottom of the engine or the top of the engine and so on. Now, there's another step because there's a really common problem on lots of late model cars and that is the gasket that fits in here between the cylinder head and the block, the cylinder head gasket. They fail in many cases and everybody seems to think, oh well, if a head gasket fails you're going to get uh, water in the oil or you're going to get smoke out the tailpipe or something like that. That isn't the case. Maybe sometimes in extreme cases, yes, but not all the time, that's for sure. So one of the things that we can tell by listening in the, uh, to where the air is coming out, we take the radiator and of course we've got the radiator cap and we take the cap off and we listen here at the radiator and we look down in it. If we see bubbles in there or we hear the air coming out there, that means that we have a leak in the cylinder head gasket. And again, we got to pull the top of the engine off, put a new gasket in it, check things out, and so on. See, this is what separates the, the guesswork from the testing. Because lots of times you may go into a shop and they may tell you, oh, well, you got blankety blank, you got some kind of a problem inside your engine. We don't know what it is, but we got to tear it down to see. Well, you can get a much better idea by using the cylinder leak down test. That is a whole lot cheaper than tearing the engine apart, which is, starts out in the hundreds and can go up into a couple thousand dollars on some engines. So before you ever make the de decision, well, you've got a good idea. Is it in the bottom of the engine? Is it in the head gasket? Or is it in the top of the engine? So. Cheap, inexpensive test gives a lot of great information. And if you have a question, a comment, or just want a lot of good information, check us out at goss-garage.com.